Hello friends, my name is Michelle and today I'm gonna talk about the book Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power while also eating some corn. It's very on point if you have read the book, so I'm just gonna be on brand while I talk about this book. This is gonna be a very chatty review because I didn't really prepare anything just because I just want it to be a chatty review like how serious can we get when I'm gonna be munching on corn while I talk about it. Okay, so just so you know I love corn but it's like not corn season here where I live so canned bean, beans, no canned corn is like my best option here so I'm just gonna you know take a bite and talk to you about the book. So if you don't know Burn Our Bodies Down is Rory Power's second book her first book was Wild Girls, which made the rounds around booktube last year. And it was like, probably the most, most, one of the most popular books last year on booktube. So Burn Our Bodies Down is essentially about a girl named Margot who lives with her mom. And from the very first chapter, you kind of get the feeling that Margot's mom isn't really completely okay. Like, there's definitely something that should be done with her mental health. And Margot kind of grew up with her completely cut off from the rest of her family. She doesn't know who, who her dad is. She doesn't know if she has any grandparents. She doesn't know essentially anything. Why is this corn so delicious? It's so good. She desperately wants to find out though because she never felt, she's never felt like her mom really gives her any kind of real love. Like Margot feels very unloved but at the same time they have a kind of codependent relationship with her mom which also isn't the healthiest. But you can tell that Margot wants to break apart, you know, wants to leave her mom in some way. Then one day she kind of stumbles upon this bible that her mom has and it has a photograph in it. And on the photograph is a dedication from her mom's mom, so like Margot's grandma. Margot decides to track her grandma down and she succeeds in that and her mom finds out and is very angry about it so Margot just says, you know, fuck that, I'm gonna go visit my grandma and be with my grandma instead of my mom. But then there's this like whole mystery that gets revealed and it's like a whole shebang. So I don't want to say any more because then the mystery would be kind of spoiled and I kind of want you to go into this very blind. <laughs> Also, as a testament to how good this corn really is, I just literally had to kick my dog out of the room because she kept trying to eat it. I gave this book five stars, which means that I always will have difficulty talking about it because every book I read and rate five stars, I just don't know what to say about it because there's just something very special about it to me and I don't really know how to explain it. Like, is it the writing craft? Is it the story? Is it a combination of all the little things that make up a book? Probably, but there's also just like this little indescribable something that just makes it a five-star read for me. The things I absolutely loved about this novel. It is a speculative horror piece, which means that there's shit that goes like batshit, essentially. And that reveals, and obviously it's not like... What I love about speculative horror is that it is deeply rooted in realism, but then it takes like this kind of twist and turn and takes you on a completely wild ride while also talking about some very specific issues that are rooted in reality. And I enjoy that about Burn Our Bodies Down immensely. Like, first of all, it has a great setting. It's just like a small town where everyone knows about Margot's grandma. It's like kind of a urban legend almost and about the fire that happened years and years ago, just like a few months before Margot was born. And everyone knows that Margot's mom left and it's like kind of a, you know, tall tale that like they tell each other and always whisper about it, essentially. So when Margot appears, it's like a big shebang, like everyone loses their shit, essentially. And like Margot's grandma owns this huge chunk of land, which is cornfields. That's why I'm eating corn. And there's like, the setting is great, but then the relationships are also great. And Margot goes through this like very... Like, oh, I found my grandma who seems to love me and like this is finally someone that can take care of me and I don't have to be responsible for myself and for them in any way. Which obviously kicks her in the ass because that's not the point of the book. To just randomly find someone who will love you. It's more so about you making hard decisions in order to get to a place where you can love yourself, really. But it's interesting and fascinating to watch Margot go through like that change of like desperately trying to please her mother 
to standing up to her grandmother when needs be because that's what she needs for herself like her character development begins very early on when she like breaks away from her mom but it's a continuous process that takes the entire book to get to the place where it needs to be in terms of character development and I really enjoyed that like the main character is not stagnant she is constantly moving physically and mentally so that was really enjoyable something that I love about this book aside from all the corn Marco is a lesbian and what I love about this is like first of all the way she deals with this identity like she sees this girl and she's like I like her as a girl that I would like to be with but I also really want to be that kind of girl because this girl is like super confident and she's like so sure of herself and Margot isn't she's like I want to be with you and I want to be you and there's like this whole conflict of identities that was very interesting to read about and also she is a lesbian but she never actually gets in a romantic relationship and I love that Rory Power managed to write this in a way that that doesn't cancel her identity in any way whatsoever so that was brilliant what i also love about this is like that the horror is completely out of this world but i definitely just believed in it you know that's like my favorite kind of horror that like if i watch something that's like a haunted house or something and the writers just do it so well that then you find yourself like checking the corners of your house and seeing if there's like anything spooky there this novel kind of just also took something that is out of this world and i was like yeah I completely believe in the story and I love how the story concludes because I also love the ending of this book like it doesn't shy away from going to like gory places and being a little bit over the top but because we have so much character introspection and because we know exactly what Margot is thinking that level of over the top completely works for me like sometimes book get books get books get a little over the top for me and I cannot deal with it because I am not in the character but with Burnout Bodies Down Margot is an exceptional character who is very complex and I was completely with her and I felt like I was in her head like she was completely relatable and she was completely a real well-rounded person to me I'm starting to run low on my corn supply which making me very sad I also want to say having read Rory Powers like the Bue novel I think she grew between the first and second book a whole lot as a writer everything felt so much smoother around the edges I guess like while the girls was very raw and so is Bernard is down in many aspects but it just feels so much more polished I guess I don't know it's a very polished novel in my eyes like you have YA horror that's like very chaotic and in the basics is essentially everything is messy and Burnout Bodies Down is like it's messy but in the limits of the book and the world that Rory Power sets up at the beginning so I like, can completely make sense and also there are like zingers that like completely take your breath away and you just kind of want to sit down and cry because among other things it also talks about inherited trauma and I am a sucker for books about inherited trauma and in this book is I think explored like so well and at the same time it is definitely absolutely a feminist novel but then it also has this kind of for a part of it it also has like a almost southern gothic feel and gothic in general because there are like these journal entries that Margot finds and reads and they are like excerpts in a novel and you read them and they help uncover this grand mystery and it feels like those books that you like tuck in with and read until 4 a.m. essentially. Corn is done. I think I talked about all the things I loved about Burn and the Bodies Down. If I didn't, shame on me. I guess I should have prepared. Burn and the Bodies Down for some reason is not getting as much buzz as Wilder Girls and I don't understand why because I loved it so much. So I would love you if you picked it up and read it. There is so much more going on, just like any horror or like speculative YA thing that you imagine there is. There's so much psychology involved and just it packs such a punch. And now the corn is starting to make me burp, so I really should go. But yeah, it's like a combination of everything that you could possibly love in a YA horror novel. I am so excited for whatever Rory Power publishes next because I bet it's gonna be even better. Like... 
you will not convince me otherwise. Comment down below if you read this book, if you loved it, or if you love corn. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I would appreciate it a lot. Check out my social media. It's all linked down below. And that's all for me for now. In true Ellen Ripley fashion, I am signing off.